simplifying. So please, listen to me right now. Don't just do one round and go, oh, I must be simplified, yay. Yeah, no, totally not, okay, totally. You can't, you can't just do once and then be, assume you're done. You have to keep going, rechecking your factors until you know for certain that you don't have anything else that divides any of those numbers. Well, we'll find out. Here we have one, one, and three. Three goes into three one time. Three goes into 15 five times. One times one times one is in fact one. One times five times eight is 40. That's your final answer, one fortieth. How many will feel pretty good about what we just, just talked about? Good deal. So what we're learning is that we can multiply fractions simply by multiplying across the numerators and across the denominators and simplifying as we go. Let's see how that applies when we have some variables in there. So 3x over 4 times 8 over 5x. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, last time when we were doing our fractions, what's the first thing that we did before we multiplied, before we simplified, before anything? What did we do? Good. And we're still going to do that. Remember, I let you extend the line if you'd like, or we're going to do what I do and simply write 3x times 8 over 4 times 5x. Hey, quick question. Do I want to, there's only two options here, do I want to either multiply this and get 24x over 20x, or should I simplify right now? That's what we're trying to do. So we're trying to simplify as we go. Listen, listen. It really doesn't matter that you have variables up there that are being multiplied. <laughs> what we're really looking to do is just simplify any time we have common factors on the numerator denominator. So we check those numbers and we see if there is two numbers, one on the top, one on the bottom, where we have a common factor or something that divides both of them. So when we look at this, do you see any numbers on the numerator and denominator that a certain factor divides? Good, just like last time, even though we have those variables, who cares? We can still simplify the 8 and the 4. What number goes into both 8 and 4, everybody? 4. Yeah, we're thinking of the biggest number. So 4 divides that. 4 goes into 4 how many times? So we're dividing and we're putting the quotient, whatever that is, in place of our number. And 4 goes into 8 how many times? Twice. After that, we're going to multiply whatever we have left over. So we have 3x times 2. What's our 3x times 2? Good. And we have 1 times 5x. How much is that? 5x. You know what, though? We missed something here. I want to show you one more thing. Rachel, you have a question? Cross out the x. Oh, yeah, cross out the x. Yeah. Well, I want you to look at this. Look back at this example over here. You know, remember when we had a common factor of 4, we divided by 4, we divided by 4? Well, look at that. Do we have anything else that's being multiplied on both the numerator and denominator? The answer is, yeah, we do. That does mean 3 times x, right? And that does mean 5 times x. Whenever we have the same factor, factor is just something that's being multiplied on the top and the bottom. Whenever we have the same factor, we're just going to simplify that out like we would any other number. So here we simplify our x and our x. And instead of just 5x over 6, or 6x over 5x, we actually get 3 times 2 over 5 times 1, 6 fifths. So even though we have our x's there, this was really similar to one of the other problems we did. Do you remember this problem on the board when we were simplifying? We had like a... We had something like that. Do you remember that problem? Yeah. yeah. And we wrote this as, oh, this is 6 times 4 times x times x. This was 6 times 1 times x times x times x. Do you remember doing that, folks? Yeah. And what we said was, okay, the 6's are gone. Because they're the same exact number, they're making a 1. And two of the x's were gone. Because we know anything over itself is 1, anything over itself is 1. We would get 4 over x. Are you with me on this, ladies and gentlemen? We're doing exactly the same thing, but here. Notice how we have the x over the x. We're just simplifying as we go, just like we did in that example. Do we? Would it matter if you have a 1 in front of the x? Would it matter like this? Yeah. We're never going to see it. We're never going to see it. you got to know that 1x really just means x. So we, it's, not, it's not incorrect, but it's inappropriate. Uh, we, we never write that 1 in front of there because we know that x means 1x. So whenever you do that, that's fine. Just erase that 1 for me, OK? Let's try a couple more. I'll do one more with you. 
I'll give you a couple to do on your own, and then we'll continue. All right, ladies and gentlemen, first thing we're doing is what? Let's do that. Either extend the line or rewrite it. We have to do that before we simplify. Hey, folks, do you, anything, do you see anything that simplifies here? I want you to notice that by doing this, we actually make a multiplication problem into a simplification problem. We're just now looking for common factors. What do we see that's the same on both the top and the bottom? Okay, I see, I heard the twos first, so we'll do the twos. We're going to divide both of these by two. What's two divided by two? One. And two divided by two is one. What else can we do? Even though this is three wide, remember it's really three times wide. That means we can simplify those threes. So three divides three, well, one time. Three divides three, one time. Now let's look real carefully. Can you tell me what's remaining on my numerator? Y. Good. One times one times y is just y. How about my denominator? One. Now, this is going to be y over 1, but do I have to leave it as y over 1? No. How much is y over 1? Y. Yeah. Anything divided by 1 gives you that anything back again. So if you ever have anything over 1, I'm just going to make that y. So y over 1, we make that y. I'd like you to try a couple on your own. If you need help, raise your hand. I'll be walking around to help you. What if it's the other way and it's 1 over y? Then you definitely have to put the 1, okay. for sure. <laughs> Try that one. Then try that one. The last one, if you can do the last one appropriately, you really know what you're doing in this. So write as one fraction first, then simplify anything we can, looking for common factors on both the top and the bottom. That's what we're doing. Let's see what we get on these things. So we have x squared over y times y cubed over x. First thing I need to see from you is make sure that you're writing this as one fraction. You can only simplify fractions if you have one fraction. That's it. Now, fortunately for multiplication, we know that we can just multiply a numerator times a numerator over a denominator times a denominator. So that's kind of nice. We just put them together, two numerators, two denominators. Then we look for anything that we can simplify. Do we have anything? Do we have any common factors that we, we have up here? 
if it helps you, if you're having trouble seeing that we have some common factors, do this for me. Do the extra step. Think about it this way. Think about what x squared actually means. What's x squared actually mean? X times x. Write it like that. There's no, no reason why we have to do all of this in our head. Write this as x times x. What's y cubed actually mean? Y times y times y. Three times. This is a lot easier to see that, okay, doing this method. Now, unfortunately, if we have like x to the 14th and y to the 21st, yeah, that's going to kind of suck, right? Because you don't want to write out 21 y's. So uh, ultimately, you're going to learn how to use your exponent rules, but we haven't really covered that yet, so we're not going to deal with exponents that are that large. And y times x is on the denominator. Richard Hafield, you okay doing it this way? Sure, we can write it out. Are there any common factors now? Common factors are shared things that are multiplied. We can cross those out. So x and x, y with a y, just one for one. And we're going to write what we have left over. What do we have on the numerator right now? x and y. Y to the what now? Good. Over what? Nothing. What's down here? Nothing. There is something down there. One. One is down there. Yeah, remember, what you're doing here is you're dividing. So when you're crossing stuff out, it's not a zero. It's not a zero because you can't even divide by zero. It's a one. So this could be put over one. There's actually one here. Everywhere you cross something out, you're really making it one out of that. You're dividing x by x, that's one. x by x, that's one. y by y, that's one. So you're making ones out of this thing. Nudge your head if you're still okay. <coughs> yeah, okay. So our answer is x, x, y squared. You could have it over one, but we really don't write the over one. So it's just x, y squared. You so far so good? Now, could you get the same thing by going directly from right here? The answer is yeah. x squared, x to the first power. Notice how this has a power of 1. We don't ever write the 1, but it has a power of 1. If you take 1x away from x squared, you have 1x left. If you take 1y away from y to the third, you have y squared left. That's what we're doing. We're actually subtracting those exponents. So if you, if you like that, do that. That's fine. That's a little step ahead of what, what this is. Don't worry. If you're not there yet, we'll get there with our exponent rules. Um, it's in a couple chapters, so we'll, we'll be there in a while. Now let's look at the next one. Next one, of course, we're going to write this as one fraction first. Six a cubed times twenty one b over seven b squared times eighteen a. Do you see anything that we can simplify? Yeah. Oh yeah, a lot of numbers we can simplify and some variables as well. Now, if you like the method going directly from here to here, you could do that here. You have a b to the first power and a b to the second power. We're going to simplify one of those b's. So there's going to be one b remaining. We have an a to the third power, a to the second power. We're going to simplify two of those a's. There's going to be one a remaining. If that's a little bit like, oh, I really don't get that, that's not a problem. Just write out what these things mean, and then it's much easier to see. So I'm going to do one more step for us so we really see what's going on. This is 6 times a to the third. We already dealt with a y to the third. Same idea, a times a times a. We can always expand that times 21b. 21 times b, 21b. All over 7 times, well, b squared is b times b. We have 18 